Hello and welcome to this training video on how to use uh, the coordinated entry workflow for uh, New York 505's HMIS system. So I'm going to show you in this video how to make uh, a new entry into the coordinated entry project for a client that is being referred to the coordinated entry system. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we're entering data as the coordinated entry provider. So you're going to switch your enter data as to coordinated entry in New York 505 if you're in Onondaga County. And if you're in Oswego or Cayuga County, you'll switch your provider to the provider for that county. Now, after we have, we've done that, we're going to navigate to the client's profile in client point. So as you can see, I've already put my client's name in here. I'm going to search for him, uh, Harry Potter, and then he comes out in the client results section. I'm not going to backdate, so we're going to click use current system date. Now, the first thing we're going to do is enter a release of information for coordinated entry. The new releases of information that everyone should be giving clients now has a checkbox uh, so that clients can share their information with the coordinated entry system. So as long as clients have that box checked, uh, it's okay to add a release of information under coordinated entry. You're going to make this the same date that um, you are you're going to open them in the coordinated entry project. So if you're just starting out, um, if you're doing some transfers uh, of, of old referrals, then you would um, leave this as the date that the client was uh, first assessed and referred to coordinated entry. The end date is always one year from the start date. And then documentation should always say signed statement from client. And then the witness is the staff member who uh, witnessed the uh, the release of information being signed. And as always, if your client's in a household, make sure you check all household members before saving this piece of information. Okay, now we're done with the release of information and we're gonna move on to the entry exit tab. Now we're going to add an entry exit uh, into the coordinated entry provider. So as you can see, this client is currently checked into the rescue mission emergency shelter. Uh, and we're going to add an entry exit for coordinated entry New York 505. And if this client is in a household and you're referring the entire household, make sure you're checking all members of the household uh, that are to be included in the referral. So for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to check all members of the household here. But if you're referring a single client, do not check any other additional members of the household. Okay, so for type, we're gonna select HUD as the provider type. Start date is gonna be the date that the client was assessed and referred to the coordinated entry system. Once we have this complete, we're gonna click save and continue. And then we're going to complete the coordinated entry initial assessment. So we're going to write in the date that the assessment was updated. So that would be, in this case, the same date as the uh, entry. These three questions are about the programs that the client uh, is interested in being referred to and that have been discussed with the client. So uh, where we used to have separate referrals for permanent supportive housing or rapid rehousing, now there are just these yes, no dropdowns. So you can select which of the programs the client um, is being referred to. And these answers will not always be yes. Uh, but if they are, yes, that means that you've discussed with the client 
uh, what all these all these programs are and the programs are appropriate for the client so for example uh, a client who's interested in permanent supportive housing uh, and is eligible for it should also be someone who that has a long-term disability um, if if they don't have a long-term disability then they would not be eligible for permanent supportive housing and they should not be referred for that program Uh, further down in the assessment is months homeless in the last three years. So this question is asking about the total number of months that a client has been homeless in the past three years. This is what we've used primarily for housing prioritization. So it's very important that these this number is as close to accurate as possible. And we do check it against the uh, most recent HUD assessment. So in the intake assessment on the most recent shelter entry. So what you're gonna wanna do when you write a number in here is check that what you're writing is equal to or greater than the answer to this total number of months homeless on the street or in emergency shelter in the past three years. And so this client only had one month homeless. So I'm, it's okay that I just write one as months homeless. The next three questions are about uh, clients' geographic preference. So um, if a client is uh, interested or able to move to a different geographic location, this is where you would select that. So uh, make sure you select which county you've discussed uh, moving to with the client. So in this case, this client's only interested in, in living in Onondaga County uh, and not interested in moving to Oswego or Keuka County. The ESG rapid rehousing program question is, is phased out and will not be necessary. These two questions are about permanent supportive housing referrals only. So if a client is only referred for rapid rehousing, you don't have to answer these questions. But if a client has been referred for permanent supportive housing, uh, the caseworker should answer these questions about length of time paperwork and disability paperwork. This specifically refers to paperwork uh, regarding someone's chronic homelessness status. So length of time paperwork would mean that uh, you have paperwork stating that a client has been homeless for the amount of time that uh, allows them to meet chronic homelessness status. So we sometimes refer to that as a break sheet. So if you have all the documentation for a break sheet, for example, if that's in HMIS, if all of their homeless history is in HMIS and it adds up to chronic homelessness, uh, then you could say that you've, you have completed length of time documentation. If you, some of their homeless history is not in HMIS, uh, you could say that it's incomplete length of time homeless documentation. So you're working on getting third party verification or working on getting the client to sign the housing history form saying that they were um, homeless for other times that were not documented in our HMIS system. The second question about paperwork is about disability paperwork. So this is again referring to the disability portion of chron the chronic homelessness definition. So if a client has social security, a supplemental security income, social security disability, uh, then you could say that you do have complete disability documentation because that's all that's required for chronic homelessness status. However, if, you, if a client does not have either of those sources of income, uh, it has a disability, and you're uh, working on getting that uh, documentation, you could refer to that as being requested or in progress. And ideally, uh, this is there to, to let housing providers know what kind of documentation you have and what they might need to work on. 
uh, and where someone is in terms of being paperwork ready for permanent supportive housing. So it is very helpful if these are updated uh, as soon as these conditions change. Family composition. Uh, this refers to the composition of the family. So if you're referring a family, uh, you should enter the composition. And I have in here the, the format that I'd, I'd like you to put it in. So for example, just put the age and gender of all uh, family members. So for example, if there's a family with a 36-year-old female, an eight-year-old female and a two-year-old male, you would write that as 36F, referring to the age of the first member uh, and the gender and their gender, and then so on and so forth for the other members of the household. Um, if you do know what a type of unit that this client will require, you can also just write the the type of unit that they're going to require. So how many bedrooms is also acceptable to put in the family composition uh, text box. Further down, you're going to see the VI SPDAT section. So here you're going to make sure that a client um, has an up-to-date VI SPDAT. You can still enter it through the VI SPDAT through the assessments tab. Uh, which may be more convenient if you have, don't have the entire coordinated entry referral ready to go. Uh, but if you have the VI SPDAT at the same time that you're entering the coordinated entry referral, you can just add it from this screen. So as you can see, this client does not have a VI SPDAT. So, um, and since this is a, just an exercise, I'm just going to make up answers here. Uh, so that we have a record. Obviously, in theory, uh, in, in practice, all of you will enter the answers directly from the VI SPDAT since each of these questions directly uh, relate to one of the questions on the paper form. And again, the recommendation here is um, not exactly what we in our community use to. Uh, refer clients to programs. And of course, you would use the VI SPDAT for singles. You would use the VIF SPDAT for family referrals and the TAY VI SPDAT for clients who are under the age of 25, so 24 and younger. There's also a text box for personal telephone number. Uh, so if you have a client's personal telephone number that will make it easier for housing providers to get in touch with them, this is a good place to enter that. And that will show up on the coordinated entry list. The fields below this line are taken from the most recent uh, shelter assessment prior to the, the entry date. So, make sure that uh, these are correct at the time that you're making the coordinated entry entry. Obviously this may change as someone is, um, you know, leaves shelter and then comes back again or is homeless for, uh, for more time. However, what you're gonna be doing is making an interim assessment every month and that will update these fields as well from the most recent shelter or outreach entry assessment. So I don't want you, obviously, as it says here, do, you should not change fields below this line um, because that won't show up on the coordinated entry list. What I need you to do is go back to the most recent shelter entry assessment. And if you, you're not sure about that, um, I hope to have further videos explaining how to change uh, incorrect or uh, inaccurate data on old assessments. I hope to have that video out sometime soon. 
So as we can, uh, we're going to check all these. Approximate homelessness started. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's correct. And then number of times, that's correct. Total number of months, that's correct. Disabling condition, yes. Health insurance, yes. Income, no. Residence, prior, um, yes, those are all correct. So then now we're all done making the, the coordinated entry, uh, entry record. And right, I said this, this question is getting phased out, but if you do forget anything, the assessment will tell you by uh, warning you and saying that you, you have to answer it. Okay, so that's how you make a coordinated entry, entry exit record. So now the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to make an interim assessment so this is after a month has passed and that client's total months homeless has gone up by one or if they have an active public assistance case now and their income has changed and now it went from yes to or no to yes. Um, this is where we're gonna uh, record that that information has changed. So again, we're gonna go to so hit interims and then we're going to hit add interim review. And typically this will be at some point during the month. Uh, since I didn't, since I added the entry as of today, I'm also going to do the review today, but in general, these should not be on the same day. And after I click save and continue, you're going to see uh, the interim review assessment, where you'll see if where the the matched provider is, and any housing provider contacts that uh, people have had with this client, and then down here is where you, as the shelter outreach staff, will have the the space to update the months homeless, their geographic preference, or uh, paperwork questions, or if there's been a change in their VI spadat. And if something has changed in another, in a recent um, shelter assessment, you actually don't have to do, I know I just said it did, but um, you don't have to do a new interim assessment, but you, you just have to, it will show up on the coordinated entry list even if you don't do a new interim assessment. So the interims are just to change the months homeless here and the geographic questions and the paperwork questions. Once you've checked those, you'll go to the bottom and click save and exit and you're done. So obviously those should be updated once a month because that's how often the months would change. Um, and feel free to let me know if you have any questions about this video or about the coordinated entry process. Uh, I'm very excited about it. Uh, thanks and have a great day.